Welcome to Statistics in Excel video number 33. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link and you can download the workbook, Business 210, Chapter 3. Hey, if you're in the class, just go to our Chapter 3 website. Hey, we're in Chapter 3 here, still doing descriptive statistics, but now, instead of doing graphical and tabular, we're going to do numerical measures. Now, we'll do one or two tabular and graphical, but now we're doing numerical measures. Remember, we have these large data sets, and with tabular and graphical, we were organizing them in a certain way so we could recognize patterns and get good information from raw data. Here, in this chapter, we're going to be doing things like mean, median, mode, percentiles, and much more, calculating numbers that help us understand a large set of data. Here's the whole list. Different than last chapter. I, last chapter I had the sheet tabs numbered in accordance with this. But in this chapter, I have so many different tabs that are talking about the same topics that I don't have the tabs numbered that way. Let's go over to location. What is location? The first uh, uh, measure for location is mean, median, and mode. What are these things? They're typical values, or what we in regular English call average. Now, Excel actually uses the word average, but that means mean. You add up all the values and divide by the count. Hey, the reason we have averages like these, and we'll see a few others too, is because we need a typical value that we calculate so we can have one value that represents all the data points, right? If you are talking about wages and you have you know, 500 sample wages from a bunch of retail stores, you can't, use, you can't talk about all 500 values. You need to take the average. And then you have one value. You could say, oh, yeah, the average wage is $14.50. So typical value, one value to represent all the data points. Hey, and the other thing under location is percentiles, quartiles, and then percentile rank function. These will be markers in a sorted list that tell us what percent of values are below and above. For example, we could say 61, a score of 61 on the CPA exam, 75% of the values were below that and 25 above, percentile, quartiles, and percentile rank. All right, let's go ahead and just calculate um, each one of these things, we have a small data set here. So we'll just start off by calculating the mean, median, mode, percentile, quartiles, talking a little bit about what each one is, a base example, and then we'll do more, some more comprehensive examples. Here's our data set. These are, say, wages here at a high line. And we want to calculate a typical value. This is a sample. That means we didn't get all the wages, just some of them. Now, average function is what we use for mean, and it's good for quantitative data. Equals average. And then you highlight the range right here. Now, notice I didn't type the uh, close parentheses right there. But if I hit Tab, Excel will automatically put it in. As long as you don't have, you have a, a simple one argument like this, that uh, parentheses will always be put in. Actually, I'm going to Control Enter and show you that that actually is true up there. So $11. We now have an average value, a typical value that we can use to talk about in discussions or reports or say using a budget. So if we were going to estimate what the total uh, wages for next year, given 1,000 hours of working, we could use this as our typical value. So. Average, when is it good if there are no extreme values? Notice these values are all sort of clustered together. Now, let's talk about the median. This is good when there are some extreme values. And we'll see a great example of it later. But just think of real estate. You don't want to calculate the mean or average for real estate because those $5 million houses will pull the mean up. So what does median do? It actually sorts the list and takes the one in the middle. If there's an odd number, which there is not here, if there was, it would just take the one in the middle. If there's an even number, it averages the uh, middle two. So we'll look, here's the list sorted one, two, three, one, two, three. Ah, even number, so you take these two and average them. Now, median function is built in, so you just use median. 
and then you highlight this data and it better come out 10.5. I'm going to hit tab. What does this mean? The median, it says 50% of the values are less than or equal to the 1050 and 50% of the values are greater than or equal to that 1050. Now, later we'll see percentile and quartile. The uh, 0.5 percentile or 50th percentile is exactly the same as the median. The quartiles will have uh, uh, quartile 2 will also be exactly the same as the median, and we'll see that in a, an example later also. Now mode. Mode can be used for either categorical or quantitative data, but more, more often than not, it's the best way to calculate an average for categorical data. You remember, last chapter we have lots of categorical data. We were counting car types or other words, text, or categories, and you can't. We saw in last chapter, you can't actually use the mean or the average to calculate an average for categorical, categorical data, because categorical data, you always get one. All right, so mode, we're still going to do it here uh, sometimes uh, when we're doing quantitative data. Equals mode. And what is it? Oh, it's the one that occurs most frequently. So last couple chapters, we use pivot tables and count if functions to calculate frequency. Hey, whichever one has the highest frequency, boom, that's the mode. Now, the problem with this with quantitative data is that there could be lots of duplicates. You could have uh, bimodal, which means there's two modes. We can see here there's only one mode. It's 14. But imagine if there was two 11s. Huh, what? There'd be two modes, or three. Multimodal is when it's three or more. All right, so we see mode tab, and it tells us which one occurs the most frequent. Now, let's talk about percentile and quartile. Again, uh, these, va these are calculating typical values. Now we're going to move over here, and what we want is we want to say the 75th percentile or, or the third quartile. And what that'll mean is, just like the median says 50% above, 50% below, this will say, hey, we're going to uh, get a value which will say 75% of the values are below that and 25% above. Just think of CPA exam scores, right? If you had the 75th percentile, say it was uh, 65, that would mean 65 people scored, oh uh, no, 75% of the people scored below 65 and 25% above. Hey, let's go ahead and calculate it here. Equals percentile. It wants the array, and note there's a K here. This K, this is different than the textbook by hand method. And we'll look at an example later, and we'll compare Excel and uh, the by hand method. Uh, this K does not need a 75. It needs a 0 0.75. Remember, that's the number that, that can be represented by the formatted version 75%. But that's how you use the percentile function. And this does calculate it different than by hand. The by hand method could be a little bit more accurate. Except for, usually with large data sets, it doesn't really matter. They're almost identical. So percentile is a perfectly legitimate method to calculate uh, percentile, the percentile function. Now what this means is it found, the percentile function found 14, and it says 75% of the values are less than or equal to 14, and 25% of the values are greater than or equal to 14. Now quartiles, exactly the same thing as percentiles, except for with quartiles, what does quart mean? It means four, so that you divide the data set into four parts. And there will be first, second, and third quartile. Here we'll just use uh, the third quartile. And notice we're not putting in decimals like we did with the percent. We're putting in numbers, 1, 2, or 3. Hey, if you put a 0 in, it would be the min, and a 4, it would be the max. But in general, we just use 1, 2, 3. The first quartile, second quartile, third quartile. The third quartile is going to do the same thing as this percentile function. Divide the value 75% below, 25% above. 
and that's what it does. $14, so these are equivalent, but oftentimes when you're dealing with the number four, you divide it into four parts, you use the quartile. The nice thing about percentiles, though, is if you know that three is 0.75, two is 0.5, and uh, one is 0.25, you can just always use the percentile function because the percentile function will give you any number, right? So if I type in 0.66 here, it gives me the value. Now there's no uh, there's no point there's no 1286 in here exactly so it actually uh, calculated a value in between and we'll look at it how Excel calculates it and compare it to how it does it by hand. But quartile you're limited to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and really we're only going to use 1, 2, 3. So quartiles, percentiles, percentiles a little bit more versatile. I'm going to put 0.75 there. Now we want to talk about one other uh, location measure. It's the percent rank. Now look at this. Percentile and quartiles, we gave it the uh, 0.75 or the third quartile, and it spit out the number, right? So if we want to figure out from a data set of CPA exam scores, right, we give it 0.75, and it, it gives us the value, which says 75% below, 25% above. But what if you had the value 14, and you wanted to find the percentage? That's where the percentile rank function comes in. So here we're going to start with 14 and go backwards in essence. The, it's the, this is the opposite of the percentile function. All right? So we're going to use equals percentile rank. Look at that, percentile rank. It wants the array and the x. The x is that value. Significance is how many digits you want to, show, to round to. I'm going to go get the array right here. Pull this down here, scroll over just a little bit, comma, and then I'm going to give it my uh, 14. All right, and then I hit Enter. Now it says 0.714 uh, decimal or proportion format, it would be 71.4%. 71.4% are below $14. Wait a second. So it's a little bit, it's not exactly the same as this. What is it doing? Look at this. Let's go look at this list. It actually excludes this 14, and it says how many values are below? One, two, three, four, five values. It excludes that one and then compares it to the total number. So it's really saying, hey, start here. How many values are below? And then if we do one minus, it would be how many values are above? So that's why we get a slightly different answer. And that's very convenient because it's saying, hey, Tell me exactly how many, how many other values are below me, the 14. Right? So we give it a 14, and it says that's how many are below. By the way, um, to, to figure out the ones above, it's just equals 1 minus that. And then it says 28.6 are above 14. Now, the way to calculate this to, to see how it's uh, this function is working is just do equals 5 divided by 7. Now, this function right here, if we had put in a significance like 6 or something, we get the same number. But the percentile rank, by default, if you leave the significance off, it rounds to the third uh, decimal, the thousands position. So there it is. And there it is there also. Again, this one right here is easy to calculate. You look over here and you say how many values are above 14. Remember, it excludes this 14. So 1, 2 compared to 7. So I'm going to come over here equals 2 divided by 7. So uh, that's just an introduction to mean, median, mode. Those are averages, typical values. We have typical values, so we have one value to represent all the data points. And then we talked about percentile quartiles and this uh, percentile rank function where we're given the value and we spit out the, the percentage or decimal below. These are uh, markers in essence. This marks the point where 75% below, 25% above. Here we're given the marker and then we need the uh, decimal or percent. All right, um, one last thing here, point estimator on this sheet. Very important to remember, uh, in this class most of the things we're going to be uh, uh, analyzing our, is sample data. If a measure is computed for data from a sample, they are called sample statistics.
However, if the measure is computed from the population, they're called population parameters. Now, since most of the data we get is sample, because uh, as we'll talk, we'll learn later, it's really hard to do population calculations for almost everything. Uh, you know, smaller sales at a particular store or maybe grades in a class, then of course that's a small enough data set where you have the population. But in general, uh, population calculations are not really possible. So the way we say it is, a sample statistic is referred to as the point estimator of the corresponding population parameter. Because really, it's not possible to do population calculations, so this is really the best thing we have, sample statistics. All right, when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, averages and a little bit more detail and look at some other things. All right, see you next video.